Okay, so let's start at the ground floor. Tell me about the characters you guys voice on Alan Gregory. My character is named Julie DeLongpre. She's Alan Gregory's older sister. Uh, she's adopted from Cambodia, came via the internet. I play Patrick Vanderwill, um, Alan Gregory's best friend, seven-year-old little boy, um, good-natured, sweet, and his assistant. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Is it gonna feel like a kid's show, or is it going to feel like, like a grown-up no, show? I wouldn't say it's childlike. No, it's adult humor. <laughs> yeah, and inappropriate. Yes. <laughs> it's, which is why it's yeah. hilarious. You know? Is that just the character of Alan's sensibility, or do all of the characters have similarly askew sensibilities? I think most of the characters are a heightened version of what we deal with, in, which is, of course, way more fun to watch. And um, like living vicariously through Alan Gregory is very satisfying. It's us interacting and, and experiencing him, and him experiencing elementary school and not being the prince that he's used to being treated mm -hmm. as. So, Because yeah. uh, yeah. he comes from this rarefied world where he's treated like a mini-god. Yes. And then he's shoved into a public school. Where he's the bottom of the, the, the totem pole. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. Obviously, Fox has a long history of animation, and you guys are going to sort of fit in with other shows. How does the tone of Alan Gregory fit in with the Seth MacFarlane shows, with The Simpsons? How is it sort of similar difference? You know, a family guy is really, really edgy and really pushes the envelope. We are in between Simpsons and Family Guy as far as humor. But we're, we fit in nicely. I think there's a nice flow, and, and, and that time slot is perfect for our show. Mm -hmm. And our animation, the it looks different. It's elegant, it's streamlined, it's, it, it looks different. So I think it's gonna do really well. Yeah, we're the pipe-smoking uncle in the family who always has a dirty joke, you know what I mean? <laughs> the sophisticated pipe mm -hmm. smoking uncle? Okay, okay, I wasn't sure which sort but of pipe hip. the uncle was. We're totally hip, no, oh, well. He, not Hugh Hefner. <laughs> <laughs> he's, pretty, he's pretty happening. I wouldn't mind being the Hugh Hefner of the animation lineup. That's, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When did you guys first get to see what your characters were actually going to look like? I saw an image of Julie in the callback, in the audition process. Oh, that's good. I didn't see it until the table read. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she was just, she was there and I was like, oh, is that her? Yeah, yeah that's great. Well, how does that inform you on a show like this, being able to actually look at the character and sort of knowing where the voice is coming from? Well, for me, it's like wardrobe. It's like when, I, when I'm in something and I put on the costume, then I'm like, ah, that's who it is. And for me, seeing the image, that was the final click, yeah. you know? And, and Christina, was, was the redhead thing what got you the part? <laughs> I think it might have helped a little, but I've gone even redder mm. since I got the part. I, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> How do you know when you're going into audition for a male character? How does that sort of change your approach, rather? I, I have a stable of characters, and then, you know, you tweak it a little bit, you, you see what the picture looks like, you see what the specs say, and um, you use your imagination, and you have fun. You go with it. Yeah. Joy, have you done a, a young male character at any point? Not and yet. Okay. I would love to try. This is my first experience with animation at all, and so to me, I'm just trying to take everything in and not fall over. Okay, so you're a newbie and you're a vet. Uh, but not really. This is my first big gig. First big gig. Yeah. But, you, but you've done other. I've done a lot of voiceovers, you know, video games and little guest stars here and there. So, But, I mean, this is this is huge for me, so I'm thrilled. And, and what does Jonah bring as both sort of the, the creator of the show and also as the lead? Well, he's just so dang charismatic. Do he's you know what so I mean? Funny. Like, you can't help but be drawn to his energy, to his creative force, and he's he's such a generous spirit. He's open. Yeah. yeah, so you feel confident to bring whatever you want to contribute as well, which is the best kind of leadership. Do you know what I mean? If he empowers everyone around him, and that's what happens. And you guys obviously sh uh, recorded these a while back. When you see Jonah today, how long does it take you to recognize him? <laughs> he looks amazing. I mean, we do go through spurts where we don't see him for six months, and then he's lost a lot. Of, but I mean, every time we see him, it's like he's shrinking. But he looks amazing, and he's doing it the right, healthy way. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's it's an inspiration. Yeah. Okay, so give me the quick pitch to viewers to watch Alan Gregory. Mm. It's between The Simpsons and Family Guy, <laughs> <laughs> and it's hilarious. We're excited. Sounds like a blurb to me. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you.